we wanted to find the mass of one atom of carbon-12, right? Well, in chemistry class, we put things on a balance. So just use your imagination here and pretend like you could take one atom of carbon right, and put it on this tiny little balance here. So we have this tiny balance. It's going to give us the mass of our carbon-12 atom. And normally in chemistry, we measure things in grams, right? So you could just imagine getting a number in grams. And since atoms are extremely small, this number would be extremely small. And it's annoying to work with small numbers. And so instead of working with these extremely small numbers, chemists came up with a new term called atomic mass units. So let me go ahead and write this here. So atomic mass units. So we could abbreviate that AMU. And chemists took the mass of one atom of carbon-12 as the definition. The one atom of carbon-12 is equal to 12 AMUs, and everything else is relative to that value. Just to give you an idea of uh, the mass of an AMU, so one AMU is equal to 1.660. 539 times 10 to the negative 24 grams. So if you wanted to know the mass of a carbon-12 atom in grams, one atom of carbon-12 is equal to 12 AMUs. One AMU is equal to this many grams, and so if you multiply this number on the right by 12, you'll get the mass of one atom of carbon-12 in grams. But once again, that number is kind of annoying. It's kind of small, and so it's easier to use this definition of one atom of carbon-12 has a mass of 12 AMUs. And if you look over here at what you would see on a periodic table, all right, so this number right here is the atomic mass of carbon. But notice it's not exactly 12 AMUs. This number is exactly 12, 12 12.00000 and so on. So this is exactly 12 and this is not, it's 12.01. And so where does the 0 0.01 come from? Well, that's because the definition of atomic mass includes the average masses of all the isotopes. Right? So this is just talking about carbon-12, but there are other isotopes of carbon. And so the definition for atomic mass is the average mass of all of the isotopes of an element. And that's what this number refers to. And so let's see how we can calculate this number that you'll see on the periodic table for the different elements. So before we do it for carbon, let's do it for a grade calculation first, uh, because this number is actually a weighted average, and calculating your grade can sometimes be a weighted average too. And so let's look at this, uh, this grade distribution here. So let's say your teacher weights tests more than homework. So 70% of your overall grade in the class right, is, is determined by your test grades. And 30% of your overall grade in the class is determined by your homework. And so obviously 70 plus 30 gives you 100%. So that's 100% of your grade. Let's say that you're a good student and so you average a 90 on all of your tests and you always do all of your homework. And so you have 100 in the homework cat category. So what is your grade in the class? All right, so I'm sure some of you guys know how to do this. Uh, what you need to do first is convert your percentage into a decimal, right? So 70%, right? So this is a simple calculation, but we have uh, 0.7 right here. So let's go ahead and write 0.7. So all we have to do is move the decimal place, right? If you're dividing by 100, just move the decimal place 1, 2 to give you 0.7. All right, so 0.7 times 90 gives you 63 right here. And then let's do the same thing for homework, right? So convert the percentage into a fraction. So we can just move our decimal place to over here. So we have 0.3. And then we're going to multiply this by 100. So 0.3 times 100. And so this is a simple calculation. You can probably do this one in your head. So 0.3 times 100 is 30. And to find your grade in the class, just add those two numbers together. So 63 plus 30 gives you a grade of 93. So a 93 is your grade in the class. And again, this makes sense because your tests are weighted more than your homework. So your final grade is closer to your grade for the test. It's closer to a 90 than it is to 100. And so this is the idea of a weighted average.
All right, let's do the exact same thing, um, except this time we're going to talk about carbon. So let's look at these numbers here for carbon. And so we have two different isotopes for carbon here. So this is carbon 12, and this is carbon 13. And pretty much most, uh, pretty much every carbon atom in the world is, is one of these two isotopes. So I'm not worried about things like carbon-14 because they're extremely, extremely small. So if you just take these approximate numbers that I have here, so 98.89% of the atoms of carbon in the world are carbon-12, right? And 1.110 percentage of atoms are carbon-13. I add all this up, right? I should get 100%. So this represents 100% uh, of all the carbon atoms. All right, by definition, carbon-12 has an atomic mass of 12 AMUs. And experimentally, you can figure out that carbon-13 has a mass of 13 AMUs. So remember the difference between carbon-12 and carbon-13. Carbon-13 has one more neutron. So one more neutron than carbon-12 does. That's what the 13 is referring to. And notice what happened to the mass, right? The mass went from 12 to approximately 13. So you can see right away that a neutron has approximately a mass of one AMU. Now these numbers are not exact, but it's just to give you an idea of adding a neutron, right? Make sure isotope have more mass, right? There's more stuff. All right, so we're gonna do the exact same thing that we did for the grade calculation. We're going to do a weighted average here. And so the first thing we need to do is to convert our percentage into a fraction. And so we just move our decimal place to, so, so right here's our decimal, so one, two. So we have 0.9889, and then we're going to multiply that by 12, which is the mass of the carbon-12 isotope. So 0.9889 times 12, that is equal to 11.867. We'll do the same thing for carbon-13. So we need to move the decimal place two, so we move it one and two, so we'd have 0 .01 there, so 0 .01110 times this number, 13.0034. So we add those two numbers together, right? So we take this number and we take this number and we add them together, so 12.011. And notice this number that we got is much closer to 12 than it is to 13 because again, most of the atoms are carbon 12 and so this is a weighted average. And so 12.01 is what we saw on our periodic table earlier. So remember this number, 12.01. So let's go back up to uh, our, uh, our what we would see on the periodic table for carbon, so at the very beginning of the video. And there's our number, 12.01. So it's a weighted average, right? It's the average mass of all of the isotopes of an element. And so you'll be using this number a lot on the periodic table.